check, check, check this out for a second. Imagine um, Willow, you know, introduced one of her female friends to the family, right? Mm-hmm. And recently, this female friend just had like two family members die. Right. This female friend is, you know, just starting to deal with, you know, fame because the female friend is an actress. And, you know, she's, you know, working through drug addiction. Mm -hmm. She just got diagnosed with a sickness. She's working through that. She's working through um, childhood trauma. She was abused as a kid sexually. You know, the female friend is about 23 years old. Right. Right. And Will takes it upon himself to take that female friend under his wing, only to later find out years later, because the female friend did an interview, that her and uh, Will were in a relationship. (laughs) Right. How would the public look at a 50-something-year-old Will Smith? That nigga would be in jail. He'd be at the bottom of the prison. He is a predator. He used her. He he took advantage of her. This and that. But because August is a man, and Jada is a five foot nothing woman, they're like, oh, it was, it was a it was a you know a consensual relationship, and you know they're grown and they could do whatever they want. And that's that's the part that bothers me because if if the if the optics were switched, this would not go to wait. Will Will wouldn't have a red table to talk at. You know what I mean? I'll say this. A lot of people have mentioned the fact that this Red Table Talk was started. And it was started, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was started with her, Willow, and I believe it was her mom. And yeah. the reason as to why they started was because they wanted to bring things to the table that they can essentially move past and heal from. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that a lot of people kind of looked at Jada as somewhat of... Um, an expert of things but mm. I don't necessarily feel like you can be an expert at things like that I feel like you're more of a of an advocate I feel like sometimes Jada may have portrayed herself as an expert in helping people get right. through these things when she's kind of going through these things herself so right, right. and and that's, that's that's the part that that is the most bothersome because remember for example when um uh, Snoop called Gail Gail King a, a dog face. Yeah, man. Doggy headed bitch or some shit. Yeah. And then, you know, he came on the red table to essentially, you know, exonerate himself. And, you know, the the ladies, including Jada, were kind of, you know, the, the, the his critics. Right. You know. Right. So for a situation like this, and I think the part that's the most interesting if August never said anything, hmm. none of this would... It, Jada wouldn't have brought it up. Right. If August didn't say anything, none of this would have come to the light. Now, there, there was a there was a tweet that I saw mm-hmm. that really stood out to me. Um, the, the tweet said, There's something to be said about how new age spiritual enlightened candle and chakra hose always weaponize their uh, spirituality to evade accountability and frame their toxicity as healing. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Mm. Interesting. So do you feel like um, her saying that she was going through a state of healing and it was such a joy to heal someone, she, do you feel like that's more of um, her way of making an excuse for her actions? Throughout this whole thing, um, what I've realized is that it was never about August. Mm. It was never about August. August August was, uh, he was a casualty. It was about herself. It was about healing herself. And and I think part of, you know, we talk about sometimes toxic femininity Mm -hmm. is how You know, women, there's something to be said about women and their nurturing, um, um, you know, nature. Mm -hmm. And she took on, you got to think, her kids are grown. All right. You know, not only is she suffering from, you know, whatever she was suffering from, she's probably an empty nester as well. So she took him on, Loki as a son as well, as as a pet, as a, you know, (laughs) as a a mentee. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, like, it was about her and her ego. Mm-hmm. It was never about him. 
she just like she said, she told us what it was. She said, I wanted to feel good. Okay. I was broken. I hadn't felt good in such a long time. What one of the quotes that we see a lot on Instagram and, and Facebook, and 99% of the time when I see this, it's women posting it. It goes something like, healing spirits attract broken people. Mm. Have you seen that before? Mm-mm. I have not. Yeah, healing spirits attract broken people. And I've always Sheesh. hated that quote. Yeah, that's 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 something, man. Damn. And the reason the reason I hate that quote is because just like this um, tweet said, it evades accountability. Healing spirits don't attract broken people. Broken people attract broken people. Misery needs company. Right. But if you are able to change the the paradigm and think of yourself as a healing spirit, then you could put the responsibility of what you got yourself into on Mm, the other person or something else, as opposed to taking accountability for your choices, for your state of mind Mm -hmm. and for how you move through the world. Like a lot, a lot of girls saying, you know, they, they only attract fuck boys, this and that, this and that. No, you, if you're attractive, especially you attract everybody, you choose fuck boys. Come on, you choose fuck boys. So, for me, man, it's um, she, she, she's a predator. I, I, I want us to really call a spade a spade. She is a predator. If you, if you, because you have to think too. Like the part we're missing is that Will Smith. Will Smith is low key like a motivational speaker, bro. Like, yeah, it's a ton of like little videos of Will Smith talking about like the universe and shit. Yeah, that nigga is like a. I don't know if he if he goes on tour to speak, but like that nigga is on the level of like Bob Proctor and them niggas. He speaks a lot of good stuff, man. I know I listen to a lot of his stuff in the morning. For sure, and I remember there was one thing he said. Yeah, I think he was being interviewed or something. And I think somebody asked him, like, how do you make your wife happy? Mm. You know, because a lot of people look up to their relationship. Right. And he said, it's not my responsibility to make somebody else happy. He said something along the lines of, I can only share in their happiness, but they have to ha- find happiness for themselves. Oh, damn. <clears throat> so now think about that. What mm. he said in this context and that to 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 think since that was probably ten years ago. Mm-hmm. The past ten years, Jada still hasn't found happiness for herself. Because you have to think in the interview, he kept saying, "I was done with you. I was done with you. I was done with you." What does that make you believe? Or what does that, especially with the look on his face? She did something before this whole August shit in the first place. Right, like he was tired of it. Like he was yeah, fed up. He, he did. She did something before this whole August thing in the first place. And the part that I think broke him the most is who it was. It wasn't even the fact that she cheated. It was who she cheated with. Somebody that he took in. Jada is 21 years older than August Alcina, bro. There, there are a lot of signs that point to Jada being some type of narcissist. Like if you if you look at number one, she was raised by a single mother. A single mother who's still pretty sexy. So you can only imagine how sexy she was back in the day and how she weaponized her sex appeal to, you know, use men how mm-hmm. she saw fit. Mm-hmm. So it's safe to assume that uh, Jada grew up thinking that men are just a tool. Interesting. There, 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 was, there was a quote on Facebook. Somebody said, it's crazy because Will has been chasing after his wife ever since Tupac. Hmm. Will has been chasing Jada since Tupac. And she's just been a little, a couple steps ahead of him. You almost got me. You almost got me. Now look at their kids. Jaden is talking about, um, you know, Tyler the Creator is his dad and he's his boyfriend and shit like that. Willow, goddamn, is off her, her rock a little bit, you know, to <laughs> say the least. She's, she's writing letters to Tupac, even though she never met the nigga. All right. You know what I mean? And if you look at how Will was raised, Will was raised by a military man. It, it the, the signs point towards all this ethereal, uh, free spirit bullshit was Jada's doing. Interesting. 